In this video, I will be examining some common polymers that you need to know for CXC. For addition, I'll be looking at polyethene, polyvinyl chloride, polypropene, and polystyrene. I'll be checking all the structures of them and the linkage. And I will, for condensation, we look at polyester, polyemides, including protein, and polysaccharides. So let's get this show on the road. First on the list we have an ethene, joining up with another ethene to make polyethene. Um, the N here, notice how we put the N right? N, N, N. So what's the linkage with ethene? The linkage is that alkanes, if you watch where the link is occurring between the green and the blue, I, I put them in separate colors. You'll see that's an alkane type linkage. And the uses of polyethene are numerous, but you can go with plastic bags, bottles, the cling wrap, bowls or buckets, and food packaging, snack paper, and them kind of thing. Next one. So the next one on the list was polyvinyl chloride. So here's how we're going to do this. Polyvinyl chloride is just included a little chlorine here now. So we're going to just, boom, uh, we we'll call this one chloroethene. See what happening here? Chloroethene. Um, poly, oh, we had a knockout him, parallel CL there, knockout him, per CL there, per CL here, still alkane linkage, polychloroethane. This is also known as polyvinyl chloride, aka PVC, right? And the uses of PVC water and sewer pipes, electrical insulation, you know, we put, um, sometimes we run your little electric, electrical insulation in your little pipes in the wall and thing, and guttering and you have PVC ceiling and thing now too. So, that's PVC, and you can do the similar setup for, what's the next one on this addition, polymerization is, no, yeah, polypropene and polystyrene, here's how we're going to do those. Yeah, so we want to make propene no problem so we have two carbons already so let's put on a little extra carbon one two three propene right three carbons and just to fix up the h's we'll put in three h's there same thing here ch3 right so this is propene now if you check it out this is propene so no chloroethene again propene and of course we're going to call this polypropene yeah but we need to change them to ch three ch3 here ch3 here still the alkane type thing and let's check the uses ropes are, this is like a stronger type of the plastic right so well last one was polyethene this is polypropene so we expect to use this one in like making ropes and toys and you see this in the turf um them kind of artificial turf in your carpet in certain types of carpet um to make your containers your food containers and to make plastic chairs and the last one on the addition list is what? Polystyrene, which is also called um, styrofoam. Let's see how we'll do this polystyrene. For polystyrene, the group we're training there is C6H5. Polystyrene, also called chloroform. Um, let me chloroform now. Styrofoam. And the uses of styrofoam cups, boxes, box lunch, right? Packaging. Um, certain types of packaging, you use the insulation and you see a poly, um, polystyrene there, your styrofoam. Anyway, anyway, you see styrofoam, that's the uses, right? So, so that's it for addition polymers. Let's take a quick peek at the condensation types. Alright, let's check out the first and the last one in the condensation. So we have polyesters and we have polysaccharides. So, what happened? We did this in the previous video. We had a diacid and a dialkyl coming together to make a polyester. You see the ester linkage here, C double bond O, O, right? And polyesters are used for clothes, fibers, anything with um, artificial um, cloth. Um, that's polyester right there. Pillows, um, your, your, your seals for ships, everything like that. Um, remember, this is condensation, so this and this is going to roll out. This is rolling out with the next one on that side you know so you're getting H2O as well same thing here this is a monosac monosaccharide X here X and Y here could be hydro um, hydrocarbon groups X here would be something like to generate glucose fructose su sucrose a monosaccharide so X for if it's glucose it might be a C6H10 
0.04 glucose is really C6H12O6 but we already have two O's and two H's here already so yeah so the X can be like that if you want it to be glucose um, and you have two of them joining up to well not two a great number of them joining up to create a polysaccharide which would be like starch right and starch is stored for food or if you have something else you can get like cellulose and you know cellulose are plant cell walls as well anything I'm leaving out of this so you're in, in monosaccharides one of them will give the OH and one will give the H so if he give the OH here he'll give his H and the next group this one will give a H so he'll give his OH so that's why it looks like this this is the repeating pattern aka the structure of the polymer so let's just look at amides and we'll be done alright so the polyamides can look a little confusing but let me explain it's not that bad this is the same diacid we had when we were doing the ester so it's a diacid here you know this one already this is a diamine because there's an amine looking thing taking place NH2 here and nitrogen nitrogen in this boy so nitrogen and nitrogen and the Y and the X's are hydrocarbon groups as you know X and Y here are hydrocarbon groups so we just bond this up you know we're going to eliminate the water and you know it's the acid like to give away the OH so that's going to go and make water so we'll end up with this and just to help we'll put the double bond O's going up and we'll put the H's that remain here going down remember this H is lost that OH is lost as well and this is polyamide diacid diamine giving me polyamide so if you're looking at the more organic side of things we will create a protein and proteins looking real confusing eh? real confusing but it's simple let me show you how to store this in your brain it's called amino acid amine um, this is nitrogen the nitrogen part and the acid part so it's like if we take a diacid and we take the nitrogen part and watch the middle the middle is a little different ch and we're going down to R where R is a hydrocarbon group but we put in R because it can have sulfur oxygen or some kind of thing in it as well maybe even the next nitrogen who knows so this is how it would look and once you have one you have the next one it's two of the same two amino acids um, just to show that it can be different amino acids you'll put R prime here so put a little dash by that R and now we're just going to eliminate the OH you know the acid gives the OH and an H from alright let me take that H there but you know we normally go for the H on the top, right? Alright, let it break. Let it you like to do everything in a certain order now. So we hit another H here and we take another OH there. So that way we'll show that this comes out. We have that the H is going down and we have the double bond O is going up and this is a protein. And that's it. So the chief uses of this is in um, nylon and the chief nylon so you can check out anything nylon anything with nylon go and research and check out the uses of nylon this is protein so obvious stuff we use protein to build body cells hair nails muscles whatever um, make our enzymes antibodies very important protein so this is how we organize and all, make up our proteins right here it's believe it or not it's a polymer proteins and um, starch are polymers vibes and with that, I bid you blessings and favor in your organic part in chemistry for CSEC. Check out all the videos, view it in order, put it in a playlist that you run through the night into your mind, into your mind, into your mind. Get to know my voice like that. Or shout out to the people who are seeing Starbucks today who are just, you know, blessings in all their exam. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Take a look at the good and bad of plastics of polymers here boom so these are the good and bad you know they like to ask a little ending up in the question like what you can do to the environment why you're using it why it good why it bad what is the uses thing plastics durable strong lightweight can be dyed that's nice you could change your colors and thing you can mold it to make a little fancy chair whatever good insulators can be spun into fibers you can weld it up and join it as well Bad, it's non-renewable, they're coming from a non-renewable resource, non-biodegradable. Plastic is just build up, build up, build up, build up, build up. It is get toxic waste when you're making them, really releasing toxic chemicals. Them companies dropping things in the um in the, in the sea and in the river and thing when you're making plastics. It builds up in the ocean, it builds up in the land, the waste you ever go on the beach and see all them plastic bottles, micro microplastics, micro fibers, the little soup it have in the um in the ocean, in the Atlantic Ocean, you know. Um, pl plastics can damage your aquatic life, hook up your turtle neck, and you see, you see it already, you see it in the animal planet. 
classics can be flammable, you know, sealant, PVC sealant, catch a fire and it burn down quick, quick, quick. And when it burn, you get more toxic gas released in the atmosphere. So it has some real good points. Eh? That's why we love plastic right now. Plastic take we into a nice place, but it has some bad, bad parts about plastic. So that is it now. Right?